Hey, welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to use the cross-platform native plugins 2 inside Unity. For this lesson, I'll show you how to use the WebView service. Now, once again, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Voxel Busters, the developers of the cross-platform native plugins. If you haven't checked out their content already, make sure that you do so. I've left links in the description below. In the overview section of the web view service, it explains that this service is used to create a native web view inside your game. And there are five different functionalities of this plugin, and they are load, show and high, register a schema for passing information to Unity, evaluating JavaScript, and loading a file to the web view. It also explains that only one web view can be displayed at a time. In the use cases section of the documentation, it gives us four examples for using web views. The first is to show a login screen from your website. Web views can also be used to run HTML5 games. If you want, you could run custom full screen ads, or you could show your hosted content, such as a privacy policy or terms and conditions. One idea that I can think of for me personally would be for if I were to release a game which I've done a full tutorial series on, I could then have web views in my game displaying the written tutorials on how each part of the game was created. The setup for this service is really easy. All you have to do is enable the web view service in the essential kit settings. And so I'll open up our essential kit settings and I'll toggle on the web view. We can then expand the web view and under Android properties, you can see there's an option for uses camera. If we cursor over this option, it says enabling this will allow your app to access the camera from a web view. And so I assume that means if you're accessing a web page that can use a camera, enabling this option grants that web page access to your device's camera. And so we'll just leave this unchecked for now. Now in the usage section of the documentation, we'll need to create a new c -sharp script. And so here I have a new script which I've called ig underscore web view, and we'll go ahead and open it up. Inside the script, we'll add two namespaces up at the top, which are using voxelbusters.core library and using voxelbusters.essentialkit, after which we can create two variables. The first is another singleton of this script, and so I have public static ig underscore web view, and I've called it instance. And our second variable is a web view, which I've called current web view. Once we have these variables created, we can then initialize our singleton, and we'll do that within the start function. So I have instance equals this. And going back to the documentation, we can see that the first thing that we need to do is register to some events. And so we have this section of code, which includes an on enable and on disable function. So we'll copy this section. And here I've pasted it in before our start function. Now you can see that there's four different events that we're registering functions to. And these events are on show, on hide, on load start, and on load finish. Now you might be receiving errors for these functions, and that's because we need to create them within the script. Now the next section in the documentation is on creating a web view instance. And so we'll copy this segment of code. And here in our script, I've created a public function with a return type void, which I've called new web view. This function has one parameter of type string, which I've called URL. And inside this function, I've pasted that line of code. But then I've changed the variable to be our current web view from up above. The next section in the documentation is for picking a frame size for our web view, in which there's three options. There's set normalized size, set in terms of screen size, and set full screen. I'm just going to use this last option. And so in our script, I have current web view dot set full screen. The next section in the documentation is for showing the web view. And for this, we just need to call the show function on our web view variable. And so here at the bottom of this function, I have current web view dot show. If you want, you can use auto show on load finish, which makes it so that your web view will be shown once a web page has been loaded. In this section of code, we can see the on web view show function, which is our first registered function. And so we'll copy this segment of code and I've pasted it in here. The next section in the documentation is on hiding your web view. For this, you just want to call the hide function. And so here I've created another public void function called hide current web view. And and inside this function, we're calling current web view dot hide. We can then create the next registered function, which is the on web view hide function. So I'll copy this segment of code and I've pasted it here. Now, if you'd like to customize your web view, there's a section on changing the appearance style and there's three different types. There's default, pop-up and browser. Next up, we have a section on loading content because up until this point, we've just been creating the web view window. In this section, there's several different options for content that you can load into the web view. 
You can load a local file URL, a web URL, an HTML stream. You can also just load data or a texture. And the last option is to run JavaScript code. But the option that we're going to use is just the web URL. And so I'll copy this segment of code. And I've added this line of code to our new web view function before we call the show function. Once again, we'll want to change the variable to our current web view variable. And then for the parameter of the URL with path, we want to pass in our URL string parameter. Now at this point we'll create the other two registered functions and so down at the bottom of the script I have a private void on web view load start function that has one parameter of type web view called result and inside this function we just have a debug.log statement. I then also have another private void function called on web view load finish and this function has two parameters. The first is a web view called result, and the second is an error called error. And inside this function, we just have another debug.log statement. And that's everything that we're going to have in this script. Now, the documentation does have a few more sections on more advanced uses of the web view feature, such as controlling the data, where you have such commands as reloading, stop loading, and clearing the cache. And then finally, there's a section on receiving messages from the web view and passing them into your Unity project. Now as for using the web view in your project, you can call either of these public functions from anywhere in your game using the singleton of the script. And I've provided these two example codes. But once you have the script, we'll go ahead and save it. And inside Unity, all we have to do is create a prefab to hold this script. And so I've created an empty game object, which I've called web view. I've then attached our script to this object. And then we can create a prefab out of this object by dragging it into our project window. Now, wherever you want to have a web view in your game, you'll want to make sure that you have this prefab in that scene. After which you can call those public functions which we've already talked about from any of the other scripts in that scene. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to use the WebView service. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos.